Welcome to Computer Tech TV. My name is Rick Arter and today's video is going to be focused around tips to help optimize Windows 7. Now this video is mainly out there for people who don't know much about computers or people who are unfamiliar to the Windows 7 environment and I hope these tips will help you out. Number one, does your hardware meet the minimum requirements for Windows 7? This is probably the most important aspect of the Windows 7 operating system, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. You need to ensure that you have the minimum hardware to run all the stuff associated with Windows 7 properly. The following is the list of the minimum system requirements for running Windows 7. 1 gigahertz or faster CPU, 1 gigabyte of RAM for 32-bit or 2 gigabytes of RAM for 64-bit, 16 gigabytes of available hard drive space minimum for the 32-bit or 20 gigabytes of available hard drive space for the 64-bit. Now as always it's good to leave a little extra so you can have room for the future updates and everything else that is associated with Windows 7. Video card wise you want to run a DirectX 9 or higher video card with Windows Display Driver Model 1.0 or higher. Number two make sure your hardware is 100 percent stable there's a lot of people out there mostly people who don't overclock or tweak their systems that don't realize hardware stability is the key to making software and pretty much everything in your computer run correctly now if you're getting blue screens of death or freezing or things like that more than likely it could be caused by a hardware issue uh, there's many programs out there if you guys have questions please let me know and I'll help you out as far as that goes but just run some programs before you um, install any of your other stuff in the Windows environment just to make sure that your hardware is 100% stable. Number three, uninstall any programs that you no longer use. Not only can this free up processes and memory that is being used, but it can also free up hard drive space. So if you're running out of hard drive space or you're using a lot of memory from programs that are running that don't need to be running, go ahead and check through your uh, programs list in your control panel and go ahead and uninstall any programs or any toolbars that might have installed from some of those programs and go ahead and get rid of those and that will free up hard drive space as well as any available memory that might be being used by these programs running without you normally knowing. Number four, limit programs at first boot. This will reduce the time it takes for you to start using your computer to its full potential. If you have to sit there and wait for a bunch of unnecessary programs and processes to start, you're basically wasting time that you could more than likely use to do other things on your computer, whether it's browsing the internet or writing email or doing other things. If your computer meets the minimum requirements or far exceeds the minimum requirements, this isn't such a big deal. But if you're looking to speed the startup of your computer, limiting the programs at first boot is definitely a way to get on your computer and get things going a lot quicker. A good example of this is if you don't use the Windows Messenger, you can go into msconfig or another utility such as CCleaner and you can disable this at startup so it no longer starts up, takes up processes, and basically is just one less thing that you're going to have to close out of once you start your computer. Number five, scan regularly for viruses and or malware. Viruses and malware are a big part of what slows down your computer and can eventually damage not only software and the operating system, but they actually have viruses that can damage hardware. Now this is a rare occasion, but damage to the Windows environment is just as bad as damaging a program or in some cases hardware. Because if the software isn't working correctly, it doesn't matter how good the hardware is, your computer is just not going to function to its fullest potential. Number six, defragment your hard drive. I recommend doing this more often if you install or uninstall programs quite often. Basically, fragments are pieces of files or parts of software that are written randomly to the disk as you install or uninstall. Now, when you defragment the hard drive, it takes all these pieces and basically puts them together. A good program for doing this is Smart Defrag. Without optimization and defragging of your hard drive, the hard drive actually has to work harder to find all those pieces or find that file because it's broken up into all different places on your hard drive. Number seven, turn off visual effects. 
basically, if you're CPU and your memory are the bare minimum for Windows 7, you can actually adjust or disable some of the visual effects within the Windows 7 environment. This can make your PC feel faster, although you will be lacking some of the eye candy that Windows 7 offers. One of the big things here that takes a lot of resources is the Aero interface. If you're noticing your PC is a little bit sluggish, go ahead and disable the Aero interface or maybe tweak some of the other things within the visual effects and you'll notice quite a bit of difference in the performance of your computer. Number eight, restart your computer whenever you get the chance. This might not seem like something that can optimize Windows, but if you always run your computer in a hibernation state or standby instead of shutting it down, data can accumulate in the memory and give you less memory to work with when you're running your programs. So whenever you get the chance, I suggest you restart your computer give everything a fresh start and that will basically free up any memory that is being used and any data that's been accumulating into the memory that you might not know or might not be using at that time. Number nine, avoid running too many programs at one time. If your computer is at minimum spec for what is required for Windows 7, you'll notice that when you try to run too many things at one time, your computer will slow down. Two ways to tell this are if you click on something in a program and it takes a second to open or to do something or you open up your task manager and your CPU is pegged at 100 percent or your memory is almost near the maximum amount of memory that you have for your computer then that's a good indication that you're running too many programs or too many processes for what your hardware has compared to what Windows 7 requires to run properly. Number 10, upgrade your hardware. Upgrading your hardware is the best way to improve the experience that you're going to have in the Windows 7 environment. As I stated before, if you're running the minimum requirements, you might have to disable a few things that make Windows 7 look better. Now, if you're running a computer that's a few years old, you might run into the issue of having a CPU that may be a little bit slow. However, most CPUs that I've seen even in the last few years are plenty for the Windows 7 environment, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. Memory, however, sometimes is lacking. If you are running the minimum 1 gigabyte of RAM, I would definitely suggest upgrading that to 2 gigabytes at least. If you're running the 64-bit environment, you're running a lot of programs, I recommend getting 3 to 4 gigabytes of memory minimum. Video card, that doesn't so much play as big of a role, but if you do use programs in Windows 7 that require GPU utilization to make them run properly, upgrading your video card to a newer video card that has faster specifications and more onboard memory is definitely a key to help things move faster. That concludes a few tips to optimize Windows 7. If you have any questions, please leave them in a comment below or send me a personal message and I'll try to help you the best I can. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Please comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Everyone out there, please have a good day. Lots more videos to come.